Hi everybody, what's going on? This is Carolina Milan from carolinamilan.net and in today's video I want to talk to you about one of those social platforms that is highly highly underrated in my opinion and that social platform is LinkedIn, okay? You may have heard about it, maybe you have an account there, maybe you're not sure how it will benefit you or your business and that's what this video is about. So in the next few minutes I'm going to tell you exactly how to leverage LinkedIn to get more sales, more leads and more brand equity for yourself, for your business, for your career, for whatever you want professionally using this platform. So stick around. All right, cool. So I am willing to bet that a lot of you watching this video right now don't even have an account on LinkedIn or if you have one, you just created it because everybody was doing it and then you just left it right there, accumulating dust, accumulating social media dust, all right? Now LinkedIn is really powerful and I wanna tell you right now what LinkedIn isn't. LinkedIn is not a CV. Okay, it's not your curriculum. You don't just go on LinkedIn, upload your curriculum, put your work experience, your skills, and then boom, that's it. It's so much more than that, guys. It's a lot more than that. Okay, so it's not a CV. LinkedIn is also not Facebook, okay? It's not a social platform where you go and hang out with your friends and upload photos and tag everybody on your post. No. That's not what LinkedIn is about. LinkedIn is a professional network. Now, you'll find, of course, bad apples everywhere. So there are people who misuse LinkedIn and do spamming in the groups and everywhere, but you know, you find that pretty much anywhere on the internet these days. What's important is that you, okay, you watching this video, what's important here is that you use LinkedIn the right way and that's why I'm making this video in the first place. So it's not Facebook, okay? It's not a place, it's not a party, okay? Facebook, Twitter, those are parties, online parties where you go and socialize and meet people and then later on those people can turn into business partners. You can end up making money from those people. But when you walk there, it's a party, it's a party. LinkedIn isn't, okay? LinkedIn is more, a reception, you know, a cocktail party maybe. It's a little more serious. It's a seminar room, you know, you tone things down and you act more professionally, okay? I'm trying to find the right analogy here for you guys. So here's what you do when you first create your account. You can totally upload your CV. It might make things easier for you. If you just upload your CV, LinkedIn is going to take uh, most sections from there and then you can go and edit them, but that's not the end of it, okay? Here's, here's some really important things about, about this network. So you have your profile and you'll have your photo. Now guys, your photo on LinkedIn, it needs to be professional. I mean, don't just put any random photo. I'll tell you something. I've seen people, and I'm not kidding, I've seen people who go ahead, take a picture of their passport or their ID and they use that as their LinkedIn profile photo. <sighs> I don't know what those people have in mind. I mean, if you have a camera where you can go and take a picture of another picture, hey, maybe you could take a picture of yourself while you're at it. What do you guys think, right? Um, so don't do that. Uh, don't, I mean, don't put a full body photo either. I've seen people who put full body photos here and that just doesn't make you look professional. That's not going to attract the right kind of people. And social media, social platforms, that's what it's all about. Attracting the right kind of people by presenting yourself as that right kind of attractor, okay? Otherwise, you're going to attract the wrong kind of people. I've seen women, you know, they put full body pictures on LinkedIn. I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't read professional model anywhere in your profile. So don't go putting a full body photo unless you're a professional model, please. Um, same goes for wearing shades, sunglasses, hats. Um, you know, try to, 
try to uh, stay loyal to you, to your brand, to what you are. You don't necessarily have to dress up, but take a nice photo. Have a nice photo taken for your profile. Now your profile will have your name naturally. So for example, you can, you can go Google me or find me on LinkedIn, my name. I'll be one of the first results for my name, even though it's a fairly common name in the Spanish speaking world, but I am, you know, I am well positioned. That's why I'm, ta that's why I'm talking to you about personal branding because I've done the job, okay? So I'm not just saying this stuff, I've done it. So below your name, you're gonna have a description, okay? I, I don't remember if it's below or above your name, okay? Uh, but it's in the same area, it's next to your photo. And for example, my profile says speaker, coach, social media, um, I think I also have a uh, headhunter, even though I don't do this much anymore because I just don't have the time. Um, what else does it say? Oh yeah, marketing or internet marketing or something. Okay, so why is it important that you edit this, this description, guys? Because those little words there, they're not just words. These are keywords. Every social platform, guys, every social platform, Facebook, especially Twitter and LinkedIn, more than Facebook, especially Twitter and LinkedIn, everything you put in your profile that turns into keywords. And when people go finding people, when people go looking for somebody who is in your niche and you have all the right keywords in your profile, there's a big chance you're going to show up in the first results, okay? So everything, everything here, you know, there, you have to look at these social platforms as search engines as well, okay? So you need to optimize your social media profile. So these are keywords. And when you first create your LinkedIn profile, it's going to put your, your uh, latest position here, whatever latest last position you had in your resume. It's going to put it there by default, but you guys can go ahead and edit this and put whatever you want. So go ahead and put keywords that describe you. Now, don't go crazy here though, don't go crazy. Don't, don't put more than four or five um, keywords that describe who you are, describe the kind of professional you are, or the kind of niche you're in, the kind of consulting you do, if you're a doctor, if you're a marketer, if you're in real estate, whatever. Uh, don't go too crazy here. You'll have plenty of space in your profile to go crazy with keywords. This is not the place, this is where you put what's most relevant. And I keep stressing the word relevancy, guys. Uh, and if that's not a word, then I'm sorry, but uh, you need to be relevant. Always, always relevant. Don't just put things just for the sake of it. So after this, guys, there's another really important, important section of your LinkedIn profile, and that is your summary. Now the summary, this is your opportunity to sell yourself Okay, because most people might not even move past your summary when they look at your profile. So this is your opportunity to sell yourself and build brand equity, okay? So your summary should not be something lame and uh, don't put something boring like, well, I am an engineer, I have five years of experience, and I'm a hard worker, I'm a team player, and I work really well under pressure. That's, that's just lame, and everybody, everybody says that they work well under pressure, and everybody will say they are a team player, you know, but uh, is it true? Most of the cases it's not. From my experience as a headhunter, and I worked, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the story. I joined LinkedIn in 2008, way before I joined Facebook. Uh, the reason was my first job was, well, I wasn't really a headhunter, but I was working in the recruitment company, uh, sorry, recruitment department in an international company. We offered um, financial services, professional services, research. It was like an outsourcing company, but with very high-end services. So I got to hire a lot of people and I had to look for people all over the world because I needed people who spoke English and I needed people with very specific financial skills, uh, sometimes programming skills. So it was a nightmare for me to find those people locally. So I had to go on LinkedIn because I needed a global network of people that I could get my hands on and, and hopefully recruit them for the company. 
So I opened my LinkedIn profile a very, very long time ago and I've been there for a while. So I know what I'm telling you. Now, your summary shouldn't be like I just told you. In your summary, you need to tell a little bit about your story, okay? Tell your story a little bit, how you got into whatever you do, okay? Why you're so passionate about it. Why you are the best choice. You know, you reading this LinkedIn profile. Why are you the best choice? And if you're going to say you are a team player or stuff like that, please have something to back it up. Now that's the problem with most people who go and say uh, they are team players. They, they have nothing to back it up with. They don't have the experience in their profile or in their life uh, because they have never worked in a team. <laughs> but they go and say they work, you know, they're team players. So if you do have uh, a way to back this up, please do. So tell a little bit about your story. Show passion, okay? You need to show passion for what you do, okay? For your profession, for your niche, if you're in marketing. Um, doesn't matter if you didn't study anything, by the way. You don't have to have a college degree to be on LinkedIn, okay? You just need some experience. Maybe you have taken some seminars. Maybe you have read a bunch of books. All of that can go into your LinkedIn profile. That's why this is not just a resume. This is, this is your professional life in just one page. Now, the other cool thing about LinkedIn, okay, naturally in your, in your to, to finalize the summary part, you can put some professional stuff. Um, you know, you can mention if you speak languages, for example, you can, you can model my profile. I mentioned that I, uh, that I am passionate about music, about traveling. I also mentioned what I studied. I also mentioned what my, my, um, my skills are, my, my uh, main skills, my technical skills, my soft skills. Okay, you can mention all that stuff. So hard, no, it's not hard skills. <laughs> Te technical skills, you can mention them in your summary briefly soft skills okay so that's it don't make it that long make it maybe two paragraphs maximum don't make it that long another important thing about your linkedin profile guys i'm gonna get a bigger whiteboard by the way because i want to keep all the info right here <laughs> another another key thing about your linkedin profile is that LinkedIn allows you to showcase, okay? You can showcase your work. So as you edit your profile, you will notice that it allows you to add sections. And you'll see most of those sections on the right side of your screen, okay? You can add awards and recognitions, seminars you've attended, uh, courses, you know, professional experience, all that stuff you can add. But what's really cool is that you can also showcase your work. So for example, let's say you're a freelance designer and you've done a lot of work and maybe you have a nice portfolio compiled in a PDF file. You can upload this PDF file to your LinkedIn profile and all the PDF presentations are gonna show up right below your summary. In fact, you can play around, you can mess around in your LinkedIn profile, you can move things. So maybe you want your PDFs or your work to be at the top before your summary. Uh, that's a really cool, that's another cool thing about LinkedIn. You can just move things around. You don't necessarily have to organize your work experience by date. You should probably organize it by relevancy as well, okay? So you choose that, you are in charge of that. And if you go to my profile, you will see that I have a, a few PDF um, files showing right there of speeches that I've done. You know, when I, when I go and I speak, at a conference, uh, many times I, I, here's what I do, I upload my PDFs on SlideShare. Now, I could do a whole other video about SlideShare, but if you don't know SlideShare, you better go and create an account, guys, because SlideShare is also a rather professional network, kind of like LinkedIn, um, that you use more professionally, not just to hang out. So you upload your presentations on SlideShare and then you can share them on your LinkedIn profile. Well, that's pretty cool, huh? So that's what I do. You can look at my profile and you'll see that I have that. Okay, so you need to take advantage of that. Another cool thing about LinkedIn, about your profile that makes it even, makes it so much better than just a CV, um, is that you can also add publications. Let's say uh, that you wrote an article, let's say you're a freelance writer, or you're an author, 
and you wrote an article uh, for a magazine at some point or you regularly add um, you regularly contribute content for a blog you can also add these publications in a section of your LinkedIn profile so then people can see the kind of work you do where you do it and the quality of it right so that's really powerful too so th this is the main thing I wanted to tell you about your profile now as you reach the bottom you'll see another really important uh, section that is your skills okay now skills again treat them as keywords but be how can I say this be honest be honest about your skills guys um, you can totally dismiss this advice <laughs> but at the end of the day if you, if you put skills just for the sake of putting them in your you don't really have those skills and people contact you to work with you and then you don't have those skills um, you know you'll be wasting their time and your time so be honest about your skills be very detailed as well try to remember everything that you're capable of doing and just put it there and the really cool thing is that now well for a couple months now I think maybe six months ago maybe a little longer ago I don't remember exactly when but LinkedIn enabled other people to endorse right our skills so if I say I'm good at social media, other people can visit my profile and endorse it. So this is, this is major social proof. Now, my problem with this, I mean, I love social proof. I'm all about social proof, social proofing stuff. It's, 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 your, it's your currency, okay? Social proof, if you're, it's, it's your social currency in social platforms. Um, the problem with other people endorsing it is that sometimes, and I'm not, I'm not making this up, most times people who endorse you, they have never even worked with you. <laughs> so anybody can endorse you. Here's the thing. Anybody who is your connection can, can stop by your profile and endorse you for a certain skill. And the problem there is that many times those people never even worked with you. Um, so it does look cool for social proof, Again, go to my profile, you'll see hundreds of people have endorsed my skills and maybe 10% of those people can actually say something about my skills because they've worked with me some way or they read my blog or they know me. But there's a huge percentage of people who are just happen to be in my network and LinkedIn asks them, does Carolina know about social media? And they just go and say, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> so, well, you know, that, that, that's going to happen everywhere. Um, so you got to take it positively, take it to your advantage, okay? So put as many skills as you can, um, put skills that you actually have, okay? That's key to me. And the last thing about, about LinkedIn, people can endorse your skills, but well, they can also um, recommend you. So when people recommend you, uh, again, a lot of people will just recommend you and they never work with you. But recommendations happen uh, when people go, they can go to uh, different work experiences that you add. For example, let's say from 2008 to 2010, I was working at this consulting company I just told you guys about. And my past colleagues there, some of them have, have left recommendations for me and they'll, you know, they'll say whatever they want to say mostly positive I think recommendations are all <laughs> are all positive and they go like Carolina um, she's a great professional she always solved all of my all of my problems she was never late she was a great great team player they can say whatever they want it's gonna look good on your profile uh, when other people again social proof social proof uh, it's going to look really good so I encourage you to reach out you can ask for recommendations. That's the other cool thing. It doesn't have to just come from them. You can reach out to people who work with you in all these companies, if they're on LinkedIn, of course, and request a recommendation, okay? So I suggest you do that uh, because it's gonna give you some major social proof for your profile. And now guys, to finish this video, um, I wanna tell you about other features outside of your profile on LinkedIn. First of all, here's, here's something else that's also very underrated on LinkedIn. LinkedIn has ads. Now, you can, you can run ads on LinkedIn, but 
it's tricky. I, I've tested it myself. And if you're going to promote a, a, um, an online business, for example, or an affiliate business on LinkedIn, you need to be really, really careful with your message. You need to be really careful with uh, the ad, with the copy, with the photo, with the landing page, especially the landing page. You cannot make it look like business. You sort of need to make it look like a job. So it's a little bit like what people do on Craigslist. They go and make their ads look like jobs. And that's how they get people. That's how they get to recruit people for their business opportunities, MLMs or affiliate marketing. So if you're going to go ahead and test LinkedIn ads, feel free to contact me. I'm happy to uh, give you some guidance, give you some consulting on this and help you get your ads through. All right. Because it's really tricky. It's also really expensive. So you need to have a budget. But think about, you know, the quality of people that you will get in front of your ads. You get top quality people in front of your ads. So it, it's worth it's worth doing it. OK, so LinkedIn has ads, an ad platform. Another thing LinkedIn has are groups. OK, now, fortunately, people misuse groups very much. They spam them and stuff. But groups can be really powerful for you to build your community. So you can start your own group and then start adding people there. You can even post jobs on a group. Let's say you want to hire a developer for your blog or for your website or a designer. You can post jobs in your group. OK, again, your group. When you draft a description, think of keywords again, always keywords, keywords, keywords. And LinkedIn also has company pages. So you can start a page that's kind of like Facebook where people can follow your page. You can talk about your company. You can put a video there about your company. Um, so you can do a page for your blog, for example, if you're an entrepreneur. Um, and pages are also very, very, um, can't find the word right now, but not enough people are using them. And they can be also very, very useful to generate engagement, okay, to keep people engaged with your brand. Okay, same with groups and pages. Okay, so once you have your personal profile done, you follow everything I've told you in this video, go and create a company page for your website. If you have a blog, if you have your personal brand, go and create a, a page. I have one. Um, it needs updating though. So <laughs> don't necessarily model mine. In fact, I think my page is in Spanish because I made it for my Spanish blog. So I'm not going to tell you tomorrow my page yet. Uh, but do create a page again. If you need any help with LinkedIn, if you need any help with your social media strategies, please contact me. You'll find a way to contact me below this video so that I can personally help you, dedicate some time, sit with you and help you brand yourself in all the social platforms, even LinkedIn. So guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope it has been helpful. Share it, leave a comment below as well as you want. Share it with other people that you think will find it useful. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed yet because I'm uploading a lot of videos these days and I promise you, you're going to love all the content that I have in store for you. So subscribe to my channel, like this video, share this video in your social media um, networks. And oh, by the way, guys, here's a little bonus that I before I finish this video, here's a little bonus, a little thing that I forgot to tell you guys. In LinkedIn, OK, you can contact people. Here's the other cool thing. You can message people. You can private message people. And you have three levels, three levels um, of connections. You have this, the first level, you have the second level, and you have the third level. So think of it as a circle. We have your first circle, the second circle, and the third circle, OK? Now, these are people. Now, your first circle are all the people that are directly your contacts. So if you add me as a contact, I confirm you, we're going to be on each other's first circle. Now, after you befriend me on LinkedIn, after you add me as a contact, all of my network is going to be your second circle. OK, because they are my contacts and this gives you certain access to them. So you can ask me, for example, hey, I see you're friends with this guy and I would really like to work with him. And you can ask me to introduce you to that person because they're in my first circle. And the same thing for the third circle. 
Third circle are the people that are the second circle's contacts. And when you are in a group with somebody, when you guys are in the same group, you become third level contacts. And once again, you can request somebody else to introduce you to this third level people. Because that's a tricky thing. On LinkedIn, you cannot just go ahead and spam and private message anyone. They need to be in your network. And then there are people who are outside the third circle. They're just not in your network. And that's when the magic happens. That when, that's when you can send a little thing called the in-mail. Now, for you to be able to send in-mails to anybody on LinkedIn, even if they're not in your first, second, or third circle, you need to pay. So that's where you need to get a premium account. I myself, I have a premium account. I pay 25 bucks a month. I've had it for maybe four or five years that I've been paying for it. And trust me, for the emails, it's very, very valuable because you can reach pretty much anyone. And you have a big chance of them getting back to you because of the nature of LinkedIn, okay? When somebody sends an email, you know that the person reaching out to you is really, really interested in contacting you because it costs them money to message you. So if you do want to take LinkedIn seriously, I suggest you do go premium, maybe not at the beginning, uh, but it is worth going premium on LinkedIn, guys. It's, it's a really, really good professional tool. So that's it. Now the video, now it's really, it really is over, guys. So remember, share this video with your networks. It would help me tremendously if you get this message out to your network, to your circles, to your second and third circles. And um, you can also tweet it. You can also post it on Facebook. Put it anywhere. It's not a private video. You're getting it first because you're in my email marketing list. Um, but go ahead and share it. I'm happy with that. Leave me a comment as well if you have any questions about LinkedIn. You can also uh, you'll find information below to work with me if you want to hire me as your social media consultant. And that's it for now, guys. Thank you for watching the video and I look forward to work with you and help you more with these videos. I hope you enjoy them. Bye.